Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Worst to Best. Welcome everyone to Worst to Best. I am your host, Golden Famous, and I've never opened up an episode of Worst to Best like this. Cool. Anyways, today, Worst to Best, Stephen Wilson. Ooh, worked with Porcupine Tree for a long time. He was Porcupine Tree, actually. I don't know. Um, this is one of those bands. Well, a solo artist. Glorified in progressive rock um, nature now. Um, yeah. Let's talk about him. Stephen Wilson has had up to five studio albums. And that is the maximum that he is releasing another album in 2020. Which I am hoping is good. Not expecting much though. Sorry. I'm sorry. Alright. <laughs> Um, I was planning on doing an IQ worst the best, which is still coming by the way. It's coming probably sometime this weekend, and then I can, pro I can properly judge. Um, resistance. I'm going to be doing a full review on that one. Probably going to live stream my reaction to the entire album. That might be something. That is going to be a long live stream. <laughs> wow, well, that is going to be a long live stream. But Stephen Wilson, okay? This is the subject of the day. Stephen Wilson. His first solo album was in 2008, before his, um, before he even left Porcupine Tree. Because the last Porcupine Tree album, if I'm not mistaken, was released in 2009. So, Intragentes came out a year before the incident. Anyways, let's do a worst to best. Keep in mind that this is going to be half opinionated and half on just pure fact. So, without further ado, number five. Hold on, hold on to, the to the Bone, released in... 2017. I cannot express my gratitude for why this is at number 5. This is by far his worst studio album to date. It is just... Why? Why does this album exist? Well, I know why it exists, but... This could have been so, so, so much better. This album is pretty abhorrent. There's nothing technically hard about this album. There's no super, um, there's nothing super atmospheric. There's nothing really to grasp onto. It's not very catching. There's no, there's not a song on this album that is prog in any way, shape or form. It's not a good album by any means. This album has good pop songs, horrible progressive rock songs, because there's nothing progressive about this album. <sighs> Steve, what did you do? This this album is pretty bad. It's pretty bad. <sighs> yeah. It's bad. Number four. <laughs> Insurgente is released in 2008. This album is pretty damn good. There's not a lot of albums to write here. And I had to put something near the bottom. There is a few, you know, reasons why it's at fourth instead of in the top three. And there's a big reason for that. It's because it sounds too much like Porcupine Tree. Similar moods to, say, stuff that was on Fear of a Blank Planet and The Incident. It's very much like those two those two albums. It's complicated, but it's nothing. It's not something completely original, and it's still trying to dig at the darker side of Stephen Wilson, which is fine. I mean, I love this album. It's it gets eight out of ten 
on my Stephen Wilson prog scale. But it does have some weaknesses in terms of, you know, if being too much like Porcupine Tree or a little bit too much like Blackfield. It just doesn't feel like a Stephen Wilson uh, solo album and it feels more like a Porcupine Tree album. Number three. Grace for Drowning, released in 2011. Now, the reason why this one is um, at third is the is the same reason for Insurgentes. It still feels a little like a um, Porcupine Tree album or a Blackfield album, but it's getting to the point where Stephen Wilson wants to figure out where, well, he knows what his sound will be for the next two albums, and it progresses from there. Grace for Drowning is a double disker, so it's not even that long, it's, it's about 82 minutes. There's some really good songs on each album, on each album side, it's a very soft sounding album on most songs, a little bit harder on the other songs, and some very weird and dark songs on some on the second disc. Which kinda goes back to the whole incident kinda thing. It's good. It's a great album. Again, 8.5 out of 10 on the Stephen Wilson scale. Now these next two. <laughs> the next two are already in the top two. Jesus Christ. Um, these two took a lot of hard thinking. It took me a lot of thinking, f of trying to figure out which one is number one and in the end of the day it came down to an atmosphere standpoint which one had the best atmosphere which one had the best songwriting which one was more technically hard and even now it's hard for me to say because it is so unbelievably close between these two they're different styles but they're both almost 100% equally as good. That didn't make 100% sense. But just understand what I'm trying to say here. Both of these albums are unbelievable. How am I to say which one's at number one and two? Because both of these albums are fantastic. But I had to come down to it if I had to listen. It came down to which one would I rather pick up first. So, without further ado, number 10. Without further ado, number 2. Hand Cannot Erase, released in 2015. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna get ripped to shreds for this. But, there's a good reason for it. This album is unbelievably good. There's not one bad song on this album. There is one slight problem. It does show that he wants to transition a tiny bit. It does show a lot of prog elements. It's complicated. There's plenty of time signatures that'll blow your brains out. And frankly, it's all good. The only real song that I can't, like, 100% get myself into is Hand Cannot Erase because it's very poppy. It's it's not really a prog song. It's got an interesting time signature, but it's it's more prog. It's more pop. My bad. Um, but that's pretty much the only reason why it's at, the, at number two. Well, if you know what number two is and you know what number one is, so, number one. The Raven That Refused to Sing, released in 2013. Again, there's a good reason for this. As a, as a sit-down-and-listen album. 
there's nothing wrong with this album it's clean it's clear and it's great and even drive home which is supposed to be a hit didn't sound like a hit unlike the title track of hand cannot erase it was the entire album just had prog elements thrown everywhere and of course the producer was alan parsons so the prog duo of the century yeah i know either way this album was fantastic atmospheric com technically complicated <clears throat> great songwriting ability from all ends and the production of this album is unmatched there is nothing bad about this album let's see here and the raven that refused to sing there is a deluxe edition here with clock song unused idea which i have on my phone it is surprisingly good and it should have been on the and it, sh it, it should have been on the on the, on the final uh, copy of the album everything on this album really did fit together though it was a concept piece very much like uh, tales of mystery and imagination but this was like Stephen Wilson's take on that same kind of thing and apparently it was very you know it, it, it was it, it's very critically received and it's a well it's a well received album so you know what I can offer it for that it's a great album there's nothing wrong with uh, the Raven that refused to sing I'm going to be doing IQ next I'm going to review that silly album resistance that is supposed to be supreme and I'm gonna love it anyways thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this episode if you enjoyed this please leave a like share and subscribe Thank you again so much for watching. Peace.